Good morning. Good morning. We find ourselves in the middle of this magical time of Advent. Um, and so um, I'm so glad to be in worship with you and to um, lean into the wonder of this season and prepare our hearts for the coming of the Christ child. So let's um, start with a little bit of song. Um, I invite you to stand as you are able and willing um, and open your hymnals to 203. Hail to the Lord's anointed. 203. <laughs> timid to take heart. The Lord our God will come. Let us pray. Holy One, during this season of waiting and preparing, we ask for you to be with us. It's uncomfortable to be in this between realities of what we hope for and what we have now. So strengthen our hearts this day and soften us for our worship this morning. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. So one of the um, things we are doing, sorry, my hair keeps on getting in the way of my mics. Can we, can, can everyone hear me okay right now? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, last week we had some fun with the mic, so I just wanted to double check. <laughs> um, we are waiting for so much in our world and in our um, lives, our own personal lives, and so we're going to take this time to um, sing our Tizé song that was introduced last week. We're adding more song. We have Stephen on the guitar here, here who is a new face to our community. Um, so take a moment to just reflect on what you are waiting for specifically in the church. Um, in the Methodist church right now, um, we have a new bishop, which is very exciting. 
Uh, maybe you're thinking about the conflict in our denomination that's been going on for quite a while around the issue of sexuality and gender. Um, maybe it's something else. Maybe you have something that's yearning um, to be spoken for this church specifically, our small and mighty church here. So, um, so once you have that thing in your heart that um, is ready to be written, you can write on one of these doves here and put it on the Christmas tree. So if you're having um, trouble getting up to the tree and you would like me to bring you a little dove um, to where you're seated, just give me a wave and I will be off to the side and um, be ready to do that for you. So, so what are we waiting for in the church? <clears throat> Thank you so much for that um, rich music. Um, we are going to turn now for our lighting of the Advent calendar. So I invite you to open your skinny hymnals to 2090. We will be singing verse 2. Verse 2. So. <clears throat>
How is this? Can you hear me? Okay. I'm reading uh, Isaiah from the New Revised Standard Version. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what is his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples, The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand and sing our response to this reading, um, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verse 2. 2.11 in your hymnals. who came forth from the mouth of the Most High, reaching from end to end, and ordering all things mightily and sweetly. Come and teach us the way of prudence. And a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham." Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. 
but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I, and I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Does the church matter? If the answer is yes, then why? What is the purpose of the church? What does it do in the world? What function does it serve? We can say many things about church. I hope that we can come up with a few things. (laughs) It's about fellowship, right? It's about the relationships that we're forming here. It's about these songs that revive the spirit. It's about partaking in the body and blood of Christ in communion in the bread and wine. We might, we might say something about the church being a place of refuge in times of suffering or crisis. Am I on the right track here? Does this sound like church to you? <laughs> but above all, the church is meant to point to Christ. It's a place to gather and do good things in the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. And because of that, the church is meant to be a beacon of hope in a hopeless place. It should revel in God's vision of peace, like that of the Isaiah reading today of the lion laying down with the lamb. So we're totally there, right, as a church? No. <laughs> At least I don't see that. There's a chasm between what we're called to do and what we're actually doing. Because we might be the church with responsibility and a calling, but that doesn't mean that we're not human still. And being human means that we make mistakes along the way. We forget our identity, our call as the church, and get distracted along the way. The church, big C, little c, Uh, sometimes chooses comfort over faithfulness because the responsibility God has given us is not an easy one. We have need for accountability and forgiveness so that we can not only return to ourselves, but to God. And this is where John the Baptist emerges from the wilderness with these harsh words about refining fire and repentance. Repentance is such a heavy word that we have to unpack, but it's about returning to purpose, our identity. It's about standing with integrity before God. It's having your heart being touched by God and letting that flow out into your behavior. Repentance matters because it's about relationship. It's about restoring hope and vision when it has been lost. So repentance is good. But it's like, go to your dentist to get your bad tooth pulled kind of good. It might not be this luxury trip, but it's a step towards health. So at least for me, when I was preparing this sermon, I, gosh, I went through so many drafts because it's, it's just been hard. This message of hope that comes from John the Baptist is easy to miss because his language is just so foreign, talking about the wheat and the chaff. Not only that, but these words have been used to cause fear and trembling in so many a hearer over the centuries. But the true kernel of what John the Baptist was saying and the judgment that is there is that the judgment that God has for us is love. So we've got to let go of that shame talk that might try to take center stage when we think on our disappointments or our sin. It only leads us further into the brambles, not closer to the stuff that we long for most for God to do in us. So, I return to my earlier question about the nature of the church. What good is church? 
where is the message of hope in the midst of it? And if hope does dwell here, which, which it does, by the way, what will follow when we let God's vision of God's peace guide us? What will we do? What will we become? What courageous decisions will we step into? Who is going to get a taste of healing and love that never had a bite before? So let us come together and imagine what God is forming us to be, shaping us to be, empowering us to be. The church matters because God is doing something with it. Let's find out what that is together. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for our affirmation of faith. Part of the practice of repentance is trusting that God is faithful and God is true to who God says he is. And so we say these words in faith, knowing that God, um, God empowers us. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinitely eternal, power and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and his will is ever directed to his children's good. <coughs> we believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit of the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ, and find strength and help in times of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and the choir, I'd love for you to come up and sing your piece.
Amanda for leading our wonderful singers. Let's turn now to prayer. Um, For what or for whom shall we pray? God, hear our prayers this Sunday morning. Attend to the sick, soothe the suffering of this world, and empower us to be your beacons of hope in this world. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Share a sign of that peace with one another. Um, so come, the table is set. And um, Amanda is going to be singing a song for us. Oh, I want, I wonder as I wander. So enjoy. <laughs> Let's pray together. For the nourishment of spirit, mind, and body, for hope that we begin to see, and for comfort from the Prince of Peace, we share our gratitude, gracious God. Encourage us in these shortened days. Through the long nights of the season, we look to you to carry us until dawn arrives again. Amen. Okay, we'll receive God's blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you peace.
Amen. Okay, our sending song is He Came Down, um, 2085, and we're just going to sing the one verse with the word light. He came down that we may have light. So <laughs> we're going to sing it until we're, uh, we bring the light of Christ out into the world. <laughs> so let's stand and sing. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.